Hi Flosstube, it's Lisa, I'm back. I survived my first video and I'm gonna do a second one. So I'm really excited about this video. I had a whole bunch, I'm calling this like the video of firsts. Like I did a lot of stuff for the first time this month and I'm pretty excited about it. So with that being said, we're gonna jump right in. Um, I'm gonna start out with my first tag figured you could get to know me and I'll do the know your needle worker tags I feel like everybody does it so it kind of has to be done but here we go um where do you live I live in the suburbs of Chicago I live in the western suburbs pretty much straight like 30 miles west of the city um pretty big city called Naperville um you guys can know where I live it's gonna be it's not like people are gonna come try to find me or anything um it's a city of like 160,000, so good luck if you try to. But um, it's a nice city, but I'm originally from Connecticut. That's where my family is. That's where I probably ultimately see myself going back to because um, all my family is there. My mom, my dad, my two sisters, my brother-in-law, my nieces. Um, and plus we have a beach house there, so you want to go there, right? It's the best. Uh, what do you do for a living? I'm a physical therapist. I work mainly um, outpatient orthopedics, sports injuries, post-surgical, um, stuff like that. Um, I've been doing it for 10 years now. It's what I knew I wanted to do going out of high school. So I planned really well when I came to college, and it's been great. Um, I like the company I work for. I love the patients I work with, and I love my coworkers. Do you have any children? No. I have two nieces. I'm single. Awesome. It's just great. Maybe it's because I stitch too much. Whatever. And be moving on. Um, do we have any pets? Yes. I've got two dogs. You guys have met Ruby. She was in my first video. She's currently under the table chewing a bone, so you can probably hear her. I think Murphy. Oh, Murphy's under the chair. So two golden retrievers, Murphy and Ruby. Um, They're awesome. Um, I love dogs. I'm a dog person, so that's my pet of choice. What are your other hobbies besides stitching? Let's see, I I do other crafty things, like I knit, I know how to crochet, but I haven't crocheted in a really long time. Um, I swear to God, I've been knitting baby blankets for like six years straight now, so I'm just gonna kinda take a break from that. Um, I've done a little bit of quilting, a little bit of piecing together, nothing, anything, you know, nothing super involved. I haven't gotten, I can't get to the actual quilting part. I can piece it together, but I haven't quilted anything because I don't think I have the right machine and I find it very daunting. So, um, other hobbies, I go line dancing, country line dancing with my friends. Um, I love country music. I know that's a question. I skipped ahead of question. What's your favorite kind of music, country? Um, I line dance. I love to cook. Um, I love watching cooking shows. That's actually what I'm watching right now. Um, before I was into YouTube on the floss tube side, all the YouTube stuff I watched would be makeup tutorials and beauty gurus and all that kind of stuff. So I'm taking kind of a break from that to do the cross stitch side of things on YouTube. So I think my wallet appreciates it, but I they're kind of almost like the same amount of money being spent. So um, favorite movie, hands down, Dirty Dancing. Um, there's just no other choice. I love it. I can probably recite it line for line. I've seen it a million times. Um, my friends and I, when we were in college, we would karaoke to I've Had the Time of My Life. And then we would, like, as we were karaokeing, we'd, like, clear the floor in front of the karaoke stage and, like, reenact the lift. Um, it was pretty dicey a couple times, but we actually still do it whenever one of us gets married. We've got it down to a science. It's pretty good. Favorite TV show? Um, I say I've got two. I love Modern Family could watch it. I watch it nonstop. I watch reruns. I watch on, US, on USA. Like I just, there's like a million other things I could be watching or streaming and I just watch the same things over and over and it tends to be Modern Family. If it's not Modern Family, it tends to be Parks and Recreation, which I love. Um, I'm describing my haul a little bit later on as like treat yourself. So for those of you who watch Parks and Recreation, you kind of know what I'm talking about. All right, Murphy. Um, I'll explain it later. Favorite book? Great Gatsby. Um, it's the only book I can honestly say I've read twice, and it's the only book that I actually liked when we had to read it in high school. Um, yeah, I like it. 
I liked the movie. I know it was kind of touch and go on the movie. Like some people liked it, some people didn't. The one with Leonardo DiCaprio, but I really liked it. It reminded me a lot of the book. I was kind of jealous it wasn't out when I read the book in high school because it would have made a lot more sense then. But Great Gatsby, love it. Favorite music we already talked about is country. And then what one word best describes you? I would probably say generous. Um, generous with my time, generous with... Um, just gifts and things like that. So I think I'm a pretty generous person when it comes to my family and to my friends. And that's all you need to know about me, apparently, because that's the end of the tag. So, done with that. Moving on. Okay, so I was calling this the year of first, or the month of first. So a couple of things I did for the first time. I did my first stitch along. I stitched on linen for the first time. I stitched on even weave for the first time. Um, I've got my first haul. I bought my first Q-snap. I did my first floss tube video. So all that happened in the month of January and a little bit into February. So that's kind of a lot, I feel. I'm pretty proud of myself. I've been stitching like crazy. My little fingers are sore and tired, but that's no big deal. Um, so. Let me kind of tell you, I'll break down January for you. So, um, I'm a member of the Stitch Mania Facebook, Facebook group, and I signed up for the New Year New Start Stitch Along and the um, Year of Starts. So, again, I'm not committing to the Year of Starts. I was going to commit to, like, maybe doing, like, okay, I could do, like, one start a month. But now, after, like, what I picked up in my haul, I kind of think I'm going to be starting more than one thing a month this year. Yeah, so, oh well. Um, <clears throat> so, the first thing I started on the January 1st was my Monet painting was Rue Montargue, 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 my French, six years and it's gone nowhere. Um, Rue Montargue, we'll just call it that, with flags, <laughs> um, from Cross Stitch Collectibles. This is what it looks like. It's a full coverage piece. It's huge. When it's done, it's probably going to be like 14 by 19 full coverage on 18 count and I'm doing it two over one just because that's how I'm used to stitching and that's what I like to do. So I really wanted to get a page finish really really bad and it came close but I'm not totally there. Oh I parked for the first month or first time ever too. That's what I did this month. So when I show you this please excuse all the some of the parking threads. It's pretty well under control though. So alas, I did not get a page finish. I came close, and honestly, if I finish what I'm stitching right now, which I could potentially finish this weekend, I think I'm gonna come back to this um, and try to get one page finish in, because I feel like that's kind of like a good month's progress. So um, there's a lot of colors here. There's a lot of colors in this. Um, which is fine. I knew it was going to be like that. I tried a couple th different things as I did it. Initially, I start started working like just one column. Sorry, I'm getting used to like the... I'm moving... I think I'm moving this direction, but then on the screen I'm moving the other direction, so just bear with me a little bit. Um, I started going down one column, and then I was like, well, some of the col stitches here like have colors in this one, so then I started working down the other column, and... I don't, then I just went column by column by column. So it's working out okay. I tried waist knots down here. Um, and I tried them in some other places. There are so many colors though. It was just super bulky with the waist knots. So I don't, I think I'm just going to end when I'm like done with the color in a section or it's not part, it's not anywhere else on the page. I'm just going to end it. Um, just so that there's no, not so many threads running across the back of my pack. Because if you look, like in the area where I did waist knots. I mean, there's just threads everywhere. And they got really thick and really bulky. And with the parking, it was already enough threads. I didn't, it was just too much. So waist knots are not for me. I do like parking. I think it goes a lot faster. I've started a project like this similarly before. It's kind of like a UFO right now, I guess. And I think I'm actually gonna have to restart it because I initially started in a hoop and the tension wasn't right. So like, even though it's supposed to be a rectangle, like it's like elongated because like one part I pulled really tight and one part not so much because it was a circular hoop. And that's why I don't stitch on hoops anymore. I'm not a huge fan. And it's just so hard to keep everything like 
for me at least, it's just really hard to keep everything contained with these huge pieces of fabric as well as keeping it clean. So I'm not a hoop girl anymore. I do scroll, scroll rods and I bought my first Q-snap, which I like. Um, I'm waiting on a Millennium frame. That's a whole nother story. It's been coming since September. It's cool. I'll get it when I get it. No big deal. But let me just show you. Like, So that was one page of that um, pattern. And so when I, I kind of make my own little thread organizers. I just like cut up a manila folder and I hole punched it and I just write the numbers. Sorry, getting used to it. I write the numbers and then I put the threads and the extra pieces of threads here. So one page, I had all this. I had all this and I had all this. It's a lot of thread. It's a lot of colors. I haven't even counted it because I don't even want to. But that was what I worked on mainly for January. I did take a break when um, Frosted Pumpkin and Clouds Factory released because um, I wanted, I just worked on those so I got them done. So Clouds Factory came out first. I started that on the 10th, so the day that we it came out, um, which I believe was a Sunday. It was actually the day, or January 10th, yeah. It was the day I did my last video. Um, or my first video, I should say. Um, so kind of my plan attack for this is I stitched the border for the first one. I did all the interior. I did a couple of the little trinkets on the side. And then I did the next month's border. And so then for February, I started on the first just because I think I'm going to start this one first for the month just because that's how it worked for January. So I'm just going to do that. I'll do this one. Then I'll do um, Frosted Pumpkin. And then I'll just keep going. Um, so again, I did Paris, I did, had the border done already, so that was nice and fast, and then I did the next border, and a couple more of the little trinkets. So, um, I bought the kit for this, so it's on the Rosewood Picture This Plus fabric, it's with all of their flosses, which, I don't know, if anybody else bought the kit, do their flosses feel weird? Like, I think they're supposed to be DMC, but they don't feel like regular DMC, they're super kind of soft, and almost like a little like fuzzy like they're not as solid um so I feel like in a couple places it's a little the black is what's a little weird to me um when I stitch with the black it gets pretty just kind of like fuzzy but I don't know that might just be me um so I did that so far so we've got Venice which I thought was cute. I've never been to Venice. Um, the only thing I did a little bit different on this, and this might just be stitching on linen versus stitching on um, like Ada, but when I did, ooh, sorry, when I did the back stitching here, the white I felt like with one thread, which I know is what it's called for, I felt like it wasn't really standing out enough. So I did two threads for the back stitching on the white. Um, I did two and I went I didn't go like every stitch I did like every two because I thought it looked a little it just looked too PC for me when it was just one stitch up the towers um I think I no I think I did two stitches for this little green back stitching too um I did one for the for the black oh god there's dog hair all over this if anyone knows a way, good way to get like not get dog hair in your projects let me know my dogs are I mean they're a shedding mess and it's there's always like a layer and I, I try to pick it and I try to keep it from going there but now that I look at it it's just like impossible. Um, for the black back stitching, oh geez, I did only um, use one thread because two was too bulky and I thought it looked good. And then I did Paris. Woo, where am I moving you to? Okay, sorry. Okay, so I actually have been to Paris which I went when I was in high school which was super lucky and fortunate of me. Um, so I've seen all those places in Paris thought it was pretty fun. I think the fun, the colors are bright on this. It's kind of fun. Um, I'm just boring. Really, Murphy? Hey. Dogs, what are you going to do? Um, and then I did my last border. So, and I have no reason why I picked Maleficent. I just think she's pretty, and I wanted to use her as a needle minder. So, 
that took me, so each month, um, the first block, which I started on a Sunday, oh. took me, it took me like five days. So I finished it the following Thursday to do the block, the border for the block, and then the border for the next block. Um, and that's with like, I don't really get to stitch a lot Monday, Wednesdays, because I work until eight o'clock at night. So by the time I get home and have dinner and settle, it's like nine or nine thirty before I start stitching. So, um, but it only took me like five days. And then when I did the second month, this February one, it only took me four days. So it was pretty fast. And so then the next one I had was um, clouds or a uh, frosted pumpkin. Let's go on an adventure. So this is my progress so far. Can you see? Okay. So what I did for this is the first month I did the whole top border. I did the two middle borders and then I did the let's and the go. And then I did the, um, I did the London scene and then I stopped and I put it away for the month. And that, again, that took me about like four to five days. So then when I picked it up this time, I did the Eiffel Tower, the Louvre, and then I t stitched on and I stitched Anne. Because I figured I don't have to do it all at once. I've got the whole month to do that or the whole year. So little bits here and there. Um, this took me though about, let me think for a second. When I did the Paris part, it only took me like two days. I think I was done with this by like, I did it, I started it Friday night and then it, I was done with it by like Saturday, midday. Um, so it didn't take me very long at all. I did, from looking at other people's pictures, for the first time ever, guys, I changed a pattern. This isn't what I do, but I'm starting it. And I changed the Union Jack flag. So, like, I had originally stitched it the way it was called for, and then I saw everybody else's stitches, and, like, I think specifically, um, I saw Belinda's on uh, Stitch Media, and I was like, oh my gosh, I love it. It's such a, she did such a good job, so she kind of told me how I did it, and I kind of looked at hers, and I made it more of a Union Jack, so looks better from far away. Not so perfect close up, but I'm happy with it. I like it better than the one that they had, um... I know a lot of people are adding their other flags for each month. You know, I was thinking about that, um, but I could potentially see, like, some of the flags for the different months being really hard to do. So, I just, and I don't know. There's just not a really great place to do it for Paris um, without me having to figure out how to, like, move the birds and all that kind of stuff. So, I just kind of let it be. Um, what do you guys think the next month's going to be? I'm kind of hoping it's Holland because they said something about flowers and, like, romantic romantic flowers and stuff like that so I'm kind of hoping like what other place in the world has lots of flowers I'm hoping it's Holland can stitch lots of little tulips it'd be beautiful okay so that was my main month of January and a little bit into February and then let me tell you about my new start for February um it's on my Q snap which I bought this month which I'm pretty pumped about I'm gonna take the the grind guard off for you guys so you can kind of see it um so I cheated, and this was supposed to be my February start, but I totally started at January 31st because, I don't know, I like just to have, like, a whole day of stitching on the weekends. I didn't want to have to, like, like start it on Monday night, which would be a late night for me and not totally get all of it done. So I, um, I cheated. What are you going to do? Um, let me show you the pattern. So... This is the one I'm doing for my sister. I had previously stitched this the way it was called for. It was a kit, so everything that came with it. Um, but her apartment burned down. It's cool. We're over it. Like, we've moved on. But her apartment burned down, and it was destroyed. So I decided to do it again because I remember it was really fast to do. Um, but as I started it on that Sunday, I was like, I started it the way you're supposed to, and I was like, this is not what the mascot looks like. So... This is a picture. Um, this is a Hokey. It's a mascot for Virginia Tech, which is where my sister went to college. Shout out to Jesse Marie Does Stuff. I know you're a fellow Hokey, so I hope you like this one and kind of the changes I made to it. Um, so in this picture, obviously the Hokey is orange with a burgundy tail or a maroon tail. Um, and then the more I was looking at it, I was like, the Hokey isn't aren't these colors anymore. The Hokies' main colors are burgundy, he has orange feet, and he has a burgundy and white tail. 
or maroon and white tail, sorry, you can't call it burgundy, it's maroon. Um, they're, they're very picky about that. So I frogged when I started, I pulled it all out, and I decided to kind of look at pictures online and rechart it. Which again, this is a first. I don't do this stuff. I, I'm a I'm very by the book when it comes to cross stitching things. So, but I love the way it's coming out. I think it lo totally looks better. Um, I think I'm gonna get wild too and even like change the font right down here, um, just because it's a little boring. I might make it a little bit more um, like maybe do like a like a Times New Romany or like more like. I don't know, just a different font, so I've been looking at things. But, sorry, my I was stitching on this last night, so my needle and thread are still in it because I just stopped, like, mid-row. But this is what I've got so far. So, again, I started this January 31st, um, and then I put it down for a little bit because I um, started the Frosted Pumpkin and Clouds Factories, and then I picked it up again. Um, Worked on it a little bit last weekend. I didn't get to work on it tons on Sunday because it was Super Bowl Sunday here in the U.S. So I was at a friend's house and I brought it because like I I use my stitching and my crafting to like keep me calm during games. Um, I'm a big Peyton Manning fan. I'm a Colts fan and I'm still a Peyton Manning fan. So I get a little stressed and a little, uh, I'm, let's just say I'm a big sports fan. I'm pretty passionate about sports. So I brought this with me just in case to keep myself calm and not worry about the game, however it went, but then it went really well, so I didn't have to stitch. Um, so, changes that I've made. So, obviously, his body, I changed from orange to burgundy. Um, I made his feet, instead of white, I made them orange, and then he's got a little white, like, streak kind of there. I don't know, kind of like his socks, maybe? I don't know. Um, and then... This little section here, which in the original pattern, like the whole body and tail area. Wow, this is so weird getting used to my finger moving backwards. Sorry, I'm obsessing about it. Um, the whole body and tail or area was, for the most part, orange with like a couple maroon accents. Um, so what I did is I kind of looked at kind of where there's going to be like back stitching in through here. So I kind of looked at like where the back stitching kind of naturally stopped and decided to make all of this orange and then, sorry, burgundy, and then, sorry, oh my god, I'm terrible. And then this part is all, like, white, and it's going to be backstitched so you can actually see around it. The other thing I did, which you can't really tell on this, is there's a couple pieces in the pattern where when it was orange, you, like, stitched, like, maroon highlight, and so I was like, I should probably do something for that. Um, so what I did is I looked in my floss and I found like a shade that was like a shade of maroon that was just a couple shades lighter. So I'm more so doing it like a highlight instead of like a low light shadow kind of which was how it was on the pattern. And then it'll be kind of near back stitching so it'll look good. Um, so you can't really see it right now but there's some of it in his tail. Um, and a little bit like these right here are the lighter color which... Literally, it's like two shades. You can't even really tell the difference. But in person, you can kind of see the difference. And I think it'll pop a little bit more when he's backstitched. So my plan for today is to get the rest of this done, which is just all the same colors, that maroon color. I do have to do a little bit more highlight kind of right through here, just like maybe 10 stitches or so. And then I get to do his head. Um, and then I'm going to backstitch everything. So I think today I for sure... I think I can get all the stitching done. I think I can get the back, or I think I can get the back stitching started, and then um, hopefully finish that up tomorrow. Do the font at the bottom, and then call it a day, and have this be done. So hopefully by the next time I talk to you, March, this will be finished. That's the goal. Like I said, it goes really fast when it's like three colors, and like one color for back stitching. I mean, you could. It's so it's so easy, and it's such big chunks that it goes super fast. So that brings me to my next dilemma. So I told myself I was going to, when that one was done, I was going to go back and stitch on my Monet piece and kind of finish that up, which I still think I might do. But then I went shopping at my LNS. Actually, I found two new LNSs. So I went to, like the last weekend in January, I went to two stores. I went to um, Country Cupboard, which is in Orland Park 
or Orland, Illinois. I don't know the difference between which one's Orland and which one's Orland Park. Um, but it's kind of in downtown Orland. So I went there. Really cute. Very helpful lady. She's actually ordering some floss for me for a different project. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, but she was very helpful. Um, and I bought a couple things there. And then that was the only one I was going to go to. But then I went to this other one called Inspired Needle, which is in Lamont, Illinois, which is only like 10 minutes away from the other one. And um, Jennifer, who's Jennifer A. I, I'm, I don't know how to pronounce your last name, so I'm not even going to bother with it right now um, to because it'd be bad. Um, she had gone on these on like a road trip this summer. So I just, I took her suggestions and I went. Um, and I've got a haul. Oops. Um, I'm calling this my treat yourself haul. I didn't really need it. I kind of wanted it. I had a list of like three things I wasn't going for and then it got bad. Oh well, no big deal. All right, so I'm going to start. I went to Country Cupboard first, so I'm going to start with what I got there. So first couple things I got is I got two little Mill Hill ornament kits because I think they're adorable. I think it's going to be a really good way for me to kind of start practicing beading and things like that. Um, they didn't have tons of them, so I was kind of limited to what they had, but I got two that looked cute. So the first one I got was Christmas Jewels, the ornament, and this is the berry ornament. I thought it's pretty. I like the colors. I like the burgundy. I like the teal. I like the gold. I think these will look cute. My my hope is that I will do a couple of these this year and then I can give them out to like my mom my sis, and each of my sisters so that they each have a kind of a um, cross-stitched ornament from me for posterity's sake. That'd be nice, right? So I got that one. And then I got Early Morning Santa, which is one of the Jim Shore ones. Um, again, I don't really know why I got this. He's got a chicken. That's kind of cute. He's got, oh, those are his mittens. I'm like, he's carrying something green. Nope, those are his mittens. I like his apron. I like his basket of eggs. It's cute. Do you think Santa has time to, like, get eggs from chickens? Can you have chickens at the North Pole? Hmm. Things to think about. And then... I fell under the prairie schooler spell. Like, everybody's talking about how they're retiring. I don't even, like... I'm not a huge, like, sampler, like, old school pattern fan, but I felt like I had to get these because there's going to be a point when they're not available. It's, it's my hoarding tendencies. I have to get things. So I got the one that everybody talks about, which is Little Red Riding Hood. Um, so it's cute. I'll probably do it at some point. Not this year, for sure, but at some point. I think it's cute. But again, like, I felt like I had to have it. Um, but I like, I like how... They run around like the outside. Um, I just think it's cute. So I got Little Red Riding Hood. Okay. Um, so remember when I was like, oh, I don't really beat a lot. I've never done it. That's not really for me. I don't, we'll see how it goes. Um, I bought like the pattern, which has like the most beads in the world. And you guys probably know what it is. It's the Angel of Love from Lavender and Lace. Um, I know the lovely array is doing this right now. I know there's a couple other people doing it. So I'm eager to watch your progress. Um, there was a finished one at the store and it was gorgeous, like absolutely mind blowingly gorgeous. I feel like even this is a pattern, even though this is a pattern that was kind of released a while ago, like it's just, again, it's super modern. The colors are beautiful. I feel like they're super like, cause there's so many like rosy goldish colors. And I feel like that's just so like on trend right now. Let's listen to me. This is because I used to watch beauty bloggers, like rose gold on trend, whatever. Um, but she was just, it was beautiful. So I was like done. We'll see. I don't know if that'll be this year. I don't know if it'll be next year. Hmm. Oh, well, okay. I think that's all I got from the first store. Let me tell you about what I got from the second store. So that was a store where I was not expecting to get a lot of stuff and I got a lot of stuff. Um, I actually used to work in the mall. Um, my company has an office there and I would, you know, be do driving downtown Lamont all the time for, just for different things because I'd like cover at the high school and stuff like that. Um, and I would always drive past this little kind of cross stitch, cross -stitch shop and I was like, it's so tiny, there can't be anything in there. So I decided to go in. Um, yeah, it's kind of an optical illusion. 
it kind of it's huge it's like l-shaped there's tons of stuff i liked it a lot um and so surprise i got stuff and the first things i got was more prairie schooler because i feel like i have to because it's going out she's retired she's retired or whatever the case might be i'm new i don't really know um, so to co coincide with my Little Red Riding Hood, I got the Three Little Pigs. Why? I don't know. I feel like I needed it. I like fairy tale stuff. So I think I thought it was cute that the, um, like the pigs, I think, are like flying in the corners as the wolf blows down their houses and they're saying we. Like, if your house is being blown down, like, that's kind of a problem. But I thought it was cute. Um, one of my favorite stories from when I was little, um, is kind of a play on the Three Little Pigs. Um, not when I was little. I was, like, in, like, grade school. There was a book called, like, The True Story of Three Little Pigs, and it was all about how, like, the wolf got framed, and, like, it was actually the pigs that, like, ruined, like, did the bad stuff. It was funny. So, that made me think of that. So, I was like, okay, done. Um, then I got Night Before Christmas. Again. Not sure why. I like The Night Before Christmas, I guess. I'm not, like, a huge fan of it, but I felt like it was cute. I felt like I had to have it. So I'm a sucker, and I got it. But And then the last one I got was Christmas Tree Farm. So this reminds me of, um, God, everyone, why does everything have to have a story with me? Like, sorry. Um, Christmas Tree Farm... The day after Thanksgiving every year was when my family would go get our Christmas tree. And we, in Connecticut, tons of Christmas tree farms. There was one in our, there was one in our hometown, um, the one we used to go to, shut down. But this was, like, totally what it's like. You just go out, like, all your nice little colonial houses, and you go get the Christmas tree, and you put it on the top of your car. Or in our case, we put it in our car, and then our car would be full of needles for, like, the next year. Um, and we got our Christmas tree. So I thought it was fun. Um, I'm really ex I'm, I'm excited to do this one eventually. When it's going to happen, I don't know. Um, and then I think I decided that I'm going to order the alphabet because I think it's super cute. I don't know. I like the mermaid one the best, even though she's apparently has a weird forehead. So I'm going to try to find them all. They're on a wish list. Mine is GH and I. I have to go off list for that one. Um, I might... Like, for my, my birthday's coming up in March, so I might just be like, hey, mom and dad and sisters, like, if anybody wants to get me birthday presents, here you go. One, two, three, stitch. Have at it. I have a couple other things on my wish list. I'll tell you about them later. Um, I got two Country Cottage Needleworks little ornaments. I got Holly Jolly with Mr. and Mrs. Claus, which I think is super cute. And then I got the Be Merry and Bright, which... I think Carolyn did this one as a card, and I thought it was adorable. So apparently I'm making ornaments this year. We'll see how that goes. Um, two other things I was really excited to get. One of them was, like, two things were, like, on my hit list of, like, that small initial little list of, like, five things. Well, like, three to five things that I wanted to get. Um, they were both on that. So they had them at its, it Inspired Needle. The Inspired Needle. That's what it's called. And so I got both of them. Um, the first one is the Winter White Santa from Mirabilio. He's so pretty. They also had this one, like, oh, hey, Mer Ruby. This is one of my dogs. You met her before. She's just saying hey. Um, they had at Country Cupboard, I think somebody had just, they had either, like, run out of these, so they had it framed, but then they took it off the wall. But I saw it kind of leaning against, um, a, like, a wall, and it's like, can I look at that for a second? And it's awesome. So, yeah. Really, I think it's it's just so pretty. Like, it, it's so pretty. Um, so, at some point, I'll do that in the next couple of years. And then the last one I got, which I was super excited about. So, I saw the Queen of Stash. Or the Stash Queen. Sorry, not the Queen of Stash. Katie, yeah, she's doing this. And... I am I fancy my bit of it myself a bit of an Anglophile. I love British things. I love the royal family. I love stuff like that. And so this reminded me of it, and it's Crowns of the Kingdom by Rosewood Manor. It's gonna be so shiny. I'm excited. Um, and they had all the floss, all the petite treasure braid, like in a kit, in a pack. 
So I got it all. Look at that sparkle. I'm not a sparkle person. Um, I don't even know why I'm saying this. I hate when people say like, look at the bling, look at the sparkle. Like, that's just not me. I'm simple. But I'm like blinging out for this stuff. So embarrassing they even just said bling. But it is what it is. I just got a deal. I have to come to terms with her, right? It's cool. Um, so yeah. So this is the one. So I bought the fabric for it. I just got an antique white Lugano, which I think is what's called for. Um, and I got the floss, which is petite treasure braid. Um, quick question. Do you just use like one strand, like one over two when you do this? Do you double it up? If anybody could give me some, um, some tips, that'd be great. I've never used this stuff before. So this should be interesting. Um, this is the one I think I might start once I finish the hokey bird. Yeah. Oops. So my year of starts of 12 starts is turning into a lot more. I think I'm currently at four that I've actually started counting the clouds factory and um, frosted pumpkin stitch alongs. Yep. So, oh well. Um, so that's my haul. Not tons, just a little bit. Um, so yeah, do I do two threads for Petite Treasure Braid or one? Let me know in the comments. Um, I've got a couple things on my wish list right now, which I am hoping I'll, I might get, I don't know. I shouldn't pull the trigger, but I really want to pull the trigger on it. Um, so as I've been watching Floss, you've been like, oh, shadow lanes. They're so hard. I'm never going to do a shadow lane. Like, I'll never, it's so, they're so fancy, and the silks, and I'm just, it's out of my league. I don't know how to do specialty stitches. I found one I really want. And I'm going to keep it a secret, because it's kind of different, but it's beautiful. So, that might be my hope, my hopefully my wish list birthday, um, birthday present. And then I really want, and I don't even know why. But I saw this finished on like the most beautiful fabric and I want to do it and it's Stargazer by Mirabilia. So I think I might get that one. Oops. And then the other thing I'm thinking about starting, if anyone watched my first video, do you remember how I was like, I don't like backstitching. I'm not good at it. It's not my thing. I wish I, I like things where I don't ever have to backstitch. I really want to do save the stitches. Yep. All pretty, like, let's go from, like, not liking any backstitching to doing, like, all black work. Right? Because that makes sense. So, I might download that and start that. I've got some ideas for colors that I want to do. I kind of want to do, like, a navy, coral, rose gold, or, like, something like that. Or, like, a goldish coral. I don't know. But I want to kind of use navy as the main color. And then, like, some blues and stuff metallics that are like like corally and bluish and like a silver gray something like I don't know so but if anybody has recommendations for color ideas I'll take them um aside from that that's it so not too bad I'm under 40 minutes for a video that's pretty good right um so yeah so thanks for watching if you guys have any questions uh, for me, obviously I'm not like as experienced as some other people, but I'd be more than happy to answer them for you. Um, if you just have questions in general about random things, parks and recreation, dirty dancing, the great Gatsby, I can help you with those. I'm kind of an expert. But until next time, thank you for watching. And I just want to thank you guys for all the love for my first video. Everybody was just so like supportive. And I got the, you know, the comments were so lovely and it was just, you know, I'm kind of, I've been obsessed with like the whole like social media thing for a long time as far as like following people on Twitter and stuff like that. But I've never like put myself out there on a platform like YouTube or things like that. And it's just, it's been awesome. So I want to thank you guys. I hope you have a great weekend and I will see you guys in a couple of weeks with a March update. Have a good one. Bye.